We're going to start day three here. And the first thing I'd like to start off with this morning is have you guys asked me a couple questions that you'd like to go back over or review before we jump into the new material. So is there anything in your notes or uh, stuff you want to talk about? Yes, Carl. Oh, absolutely, but we're going to do it with a live screen. Yeah. Anything else? On what screen did you determine the stock moves an average of a dollar a day? Okay, I haven't shown that to you. Uh, we Generally, we're going to find the average true trading range or average daily trading range on a financial website like Smart Money or like uh, CNBC.com or something like that. And again, We've only touched on a few of these things. Everything we've talked about, we go into in more and more depth as we go along in the course. I'm sorry, Al, what was your question? That's on a particular stock. On a particular stock. Now, on the platform, we also have the ability to kind of fudge it in there because we do have a study that is called ATR, or Average True Range. And we could go back and put up like six months on a daily chart and look at what the average trading range per day was and come up with a very, very close estimate. Okay, Now, how do you really do average daily trading range? If you want to do it yourself, and you guys already know, I like you to do it yourself so you truly understand what's going on. Well, you go back at least 20 days and you look at the high and the low of your stock and you put it on like an Excel spreadsheet and you ask the uh, Excel spreadsheet to subtract the little number from the big number and that gives you your range. You then add up all the ranges, 20 of them, and divide by 20. And that gives you your average for 20 days. And then each day you add a new day and you drop off the old one and now you have a moving average. So how do we do it again? We'll find the average daily trading range find the high and the low for the last 20 days, and you can do this right off of a chart, okay? Add up the all 20 day ranges and divide by 20. Now, Mike, is 20 enough? Well, it, again, it depends on your trading style. If you're gonna be a short-term trader, 20 days is a lot. But if you're gonna hold this thing for two months, maybe you need to go out 90 days or 100 days, okay, to get an better average. Remember what I told you about statistical probability. The more statistical evidence you have, the better the rule will work. Okay? So that's a couple of different ways uh, to do it. We can use the platform or we can uh, and cheat a little bit. It's a lot faster. Or we can actually do the math. Okay? Now, I think as beginning traders, you should set up a spreadsheet and do the math. Now, as you become, you start to get used to it, one of the things that the students always are amazed by is when one of our OTA instructors stand up here and we go, now, Cisco is going to move up right now. And you go, well, how does he know that? Well, guys, that's the difference between me and you. I've been doing this for 27 years, okay? Uh, I'm, I know all the numbers in my head. I know where the support lines and the resistance lines are. I have them memorized because I work with them every day. To you, it's almost a mystery. Uh, we're seeing a declining market here. And be just before class officially started, we were, I was talking to a couple of you, and I said, well, the S&P, uh, the SPX, the S&P 500, is going to come down to probably around 10, 1,074 points. It's trading at 1,100. Where did I get that? 1074. Well, somewhere along the line, that was a resistance line, and then it broke through it, so it's going to be a support line now. And I know that. Ready? And I work with these numbers every day. You will start to understand your stock and your price levels. It's very, very important you understand index price levels and your particular stock's price levels. What is important to Cisco? Well, right now, support is at $22, major support. There's some interest supports at like maybe $22.37 and $22.54. How do I know that? Well, I trade Cisco on a daily basis. So I know where I am. I don't have to draw the lines. Right now, you guys have to draw the lines. You have to go to a chart. You have to see where the support line is or where the resistance line is. You have to draw it. You have to pull the crosshair down on it, and you have to look at the number. But you do that every day, 
you start to remember those numbers, <laughs> okay? So you know, the old, what, you sling enough mud against the wall, some of it's bound to stick. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Okay, well, let's just jump into some new information it's familiar with. So that further takes that pool down. So maybe you want to do the smart select and get 20 of them, and then you look and go, well, I haven't a clue who, you know, Zambezi uh, Airlines are, and I know nothing about the airline industry. So throw that one out. But I know something about Yellow Freight or Consolidate or Roadway because I happen to be in the transportation business. So that one, you'd be a keeper. Now we take it out and see, does it have the million average daily volume? Does it match the beta? Does it have the price? And those sort of things, okay? So it, it just kind of, the IBD thing is just to give you kind of a gene pool of, of selection. Then you have to be particular of what goes, comes out of there, all righty? So it just finds you a big, big pool, and then you can narrow it down to a few stocks. Okay, here's some of the things we're going to do today. Uh, I'm going to do some live trading for you, and then uh, later in the day, I'm going to give you guys an uh, hour and a half, couple hours of trading yourselves, and we'll work on some specific projects. Uh, we're going to talk about order execution first thing this morning. We're going to do some uh, talk about give you your first lecture on shorting, so you guys clearly understand it and understand the rules and we'll talk about uh, trading remotely uh, because we break the seven-day class into a three and a four-day section some of you guys will be going home you won't be staying here for the entire week so I want to make sure that when you go home you know how to set up your trading station and your trading office okay and we're going to talk about broker selection and stuff and then some of you will actually in between when you take this break we'll try to do some live trading so I want to talk to you about preparing uh, for live trading because you don't have all the information. This is a seven day class, okay? Uh, and of course, the last thing of the day is always with OTA will be a heavy dose of risk management and we'll get into the 10 laws of day trading. All righty? Now, we looked at a couple of different things on the platform. Um, uh, we talked primarily about Dart and uh, the smart order routing technology that each platform has, we need to be able to get back in here and start to look at some of the specific features of routing. And uh, so let's just jump into that and talk a little bit about executions. Ah, so the instructor will demonstrate a variety of live trades. So why don't we go do that? And uh, uh, I'll. Instead of looking at the slide here, we're going to pull up the real platform and I'm going to talk you through a couple of different trades as I see them. Now, once again, guys, please, uh, we're going to have to short-term trade because you won't be here next week. So I can't put on a swing trade for you, but I'm not trying to force you into momentum trading either. Okay, But we're going to have to do some momentum trading for me to explain the different routes. Alrighty, the gang, let's, uh, let's go out to the platform, and here's exactly what we were looking at the other day, same setup, okay, uh, let's move this down just a little bit, and let me go quickly uh, again about some of the features here so you understand where I'm going. On the left-hand side, left or up corner, we have the stock chart. It is linked to the level two box here in the top center, and is linked to the board view. So if I click on any one of these on the board view, it updates the level two box and updates the chart. Everybody with me there? Good. You ready? So here we go. If we went to look at Cisco, uh, we can see what Cisco's been doing, pretty much going flat today. Um, we'll go out and find something a little bit more exciting, but let's talk a, bit, a little bit about this first. Okay. We also have in the bottom left-hand corner our uh, different indexes. Right now we've got the uh, S&P E-minis up, Okay, so that we can see what the overall sentiment of the 500 uh, best stocks in the United States are doing. And as you can see, we gapped up, had a little bit of a fill, and pretty much we're going up today, maybe sideways right now, but we're a little bit in the doldrums still. Okay, so as we uh, approach a little bit later, we'll get into some live trading, maybe we'll get some good action here. Again, this chart is linked to this board view in the upper right-hand corner. I just highlighted it. So if I wanted to look at the Dow Jones, I could just click on the DJI, and we see it has a similar shape as the S&Ps did. 
uh, I, we could look at our trend and we can see that it's been moving below the dollar or the one 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 dollar it's not a dollar guys the one unit okay the one line okay uh, most of the day you ready uh, we can look at the Nasdaq composite and see that it has gapped up a little bit of fill looks like it's a little stronger than the Dow is today you ready so again we're linked from this upper right hand board view to this lower left chart let's go back to our uh, S&P's okay uh, those are the links etc uh, we want to try to focus on our S&P's as I said earlier because these give us a really good sentiment factor of what the overall market is thinking and we can look up here and you can see that Cisco isn't all that highly correlated today you can see right here at 12 noon where the S&P's go up well Cisco has a little bit of a pop up but it's not very strong today now when the S&P's went down here earlier can everybody see that at the same time Cisco went down about the same amount already so if anything we would say that Cisco is a little fragile today I wouldn't say it's really weak it hasn't tanked when the S&P's went down but it did go down with them but it's not going up as strongly when the S&P's go up okay let's just take a look at somebody else uh, how about Microsoft now you can see Microsoft is very weak today compared to the S&P's when the S&P's did a little bit of a sell-off Microsoft came down very strongly when the S&P's went sideways Microsoft went sideways when the S&P's rallied strongly Microsoft had a little bit of a hump up but as soon as the S&P showed any weakness Microsoft started to fall off so if we saw a great downturn in the S&P's Microsoft might not be a bad stock to go short in everybody got that okay uh, let's just find a stock out here you know, this one's a little range bound but we can work with it uh, let's make the the chart nice and big here and I want to draw a couple lines on here for you um, first off can everybody see that yesterday's high right in this neck of the woods here probably would have been a pretty good line 